So if you could invent anything, what would it be? If I could invent anything, a way to stop global warming. And how would you go about doing that? You'd have to like extract, I think, the greenhouse gases from the air somehow. So maybe you could make like a special kind of, like imagine like the gills on a fish, but it's said for like air and yeah. greenhouse gases. When I grow up, I sort of want to be a car creator in a way. I know that Google already created a car that can drive itself. Doesn't that kind of scare you, a car that drives by itself? Yeah, I mean like at rush hour you just be like, ooh, this is gonna be really fun. Without driving, it'll be so fun. But yeah. the next thing you know, it's all these crazy drivers gonna be crashing into you. A suit that can make someone fly. A suit that can make someone fly. Why is that? Why is that important? So many people say that they want to fly if they have a magical power, but I don't think anybody's ever ever been able to achieve that before. And um, what's your favorite invention of favorite all time? Favorite invention, yeah. probably the cell phone, because it has, because like now you can have all your favorite games on it, and and like when you didn't, you could only play like board games, but now you can play like Minecraft on it and everything like that. I'm just really happy that they made it. I would totally invent a way to bring people back to life once they're dying or they're dead. Okay, that would be that would be pretty impressive if you could build that. Or a shrink ray. So you'd either do a shrink ray or bring people back from the dead. Yeah. Those are the two things you'd rather or do. Or both. Or both. All right, folks. Let's have a big GeekWire welcome for Tanner, Marcus, Rebecca, Elliot, and Annabelle, our geeky kids. Woo! Woohoo! These, yes, yes, these are our future innovators. And guys, was that fun doing the videos in the GeekWire offices? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we talked about inventions there a little bit. So you were talking about self-driving cars, Elliot. Why self-driving cars? Do you think is that, is that going to be cool? Um, I know that it's already been invented um, called the Google car, and I know that it's only gotten into two accidents, and it wasn't the car, it was actually the drivers. It was the driver's fault, huh? One of the things that I loved about the session in the office is that John learned so much. <laughs> <laughs> These kids schooled me. These yeah. kids schooled me. So um, why don't we start, we're just going to ask everybody what they want to, or what, let's start with what's your favorite subject in school. Are you even in school, Tanner? Yeah, I am in kindergarten, and I am six years old. And what's your favorite favorite subject or thing to learn? My favorite thing to learn is by learning the capital letters and the lowercase letters. Capital and lowercase letters, yeah. Why do you like learning those? Because they are, like, the goodest things on earth, and I really like my letters and the letters in my name. And do you have a favorite letter? A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y. <laughs> okay, well that's interesting. So you like the vowels. It sounds like you like vowels, but also why? Why, why? Because I have a, like A, a vowel, and I have an E, a vowel. In, In your name. name. In your name, right? Yeah, under, makes sense, makes sense. Marcus, how about you? What's your favorite subject in school, and what grade are you in? That's hard, but I... What, what grade are you in? Oh, I'm in fourth. Fourth grade. And so what's your favorite subject? What do you like learning about? Oh, that's hard. Well, art is really fun because now we have an arts teacher, and she's really nice. So, so this, the last time I did art, we were making bags hold all our stuff. So we had to, like, deconstruct them and put them back together because it would, because it just has to hold the 2D stuff, not the 3D stuff. Yeah, so building things. It sounds like... In the videos we learned, there was a new word for a lot of people, entrepreneur. Did you know what that word was before? Um, no. And does anyone now know what an entrepreneur is? Any yeah, Annabelle. Go ahead, Annabelle. Um, uh, an entrepreneur is someone who's uh, starting a business or they already have a business. They're just, uh, they own a business. Yeah, basically. absolutely. So we'll keep going down the line here. Rebecca, how about you? Uh, what's your favorite subject in school? Oh, that's kind of tough. Um, I really like school a lot, but I guess I really like science and technology. Okay. Is there a part of science uh, or technology you like? Mm. Biology. Astro I know you're astronomy. You're kind of into, <laughs> into the stars, right? 
Well, I really like physics and chemistry a lot. Okay. That's great. Yeah. A little more advanced than my, maybe my choices, <laughs> yeah. And how about Elliot? What's your favorite subject in school? Um, reading, I guess, to be honest. Yeah. What do you like to read? Um, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, usually. I can't wait for the new one to come out called Old School. What's it called? Old School. Old School. The new yeah, that's what, that's what I am. Old School. <laughs> <laughs> Annabelle. My favorite subject in school. You're asking me to choose? <laughs> yeah. Let's hear um, it, Annabelle. Give us a straight. Either science or art. Okay. And why do you like those two? Um, I like art because I just kind of like drawing in general. I like just drawing whenever I feel like it. And I like science because I, I think there's so much cool stuff we can learn about the world around us and ourselves, too. too. Yeah. And in the videos, we talked a lot about games, and everybody has some of their favorite games. And Minecraft was a hot game. Uh, Tanner, you talked a little bit about Minecraft, and you said you liked it. But then you said you didn't like it because of the octopuses and everything kind of getting at you. Uh, do you. Are you playing Minecraft now? Uh, yeah, my dad bought it um, at a store. I can't remember what store, but uh, when I go to my new world, the thing is when I go in the water, I can't escape fast enough before those things grab me. Yeah. I well, can't escape very good. Why do you like Minecraft? What's cool about it? Well. The thing that's cool about it is that you can break things, you can build things, anything. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. Do you like building things? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How about you, Marcus? I know you're a big gamer. What's your favorite game? Minecraft. And why, wh why do you like Minecraft? Because it's an open source game. Oh, open source. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what, what does that mean? What does open source mean? Open source means there's no levels, there's no things you can't break, there's no things you break and you get points, there's no things that you have to like do. It, you can do whatever you want. Uh, it's okay. not a certain thing that you have to do. You don't get stuck on the level. You don't get all frustrated with it. But it's, I just really like it because it's like, the only, it's like the only game that is an open source game right now other than LEGO World and LEGO okay. Dimensions. What, what about you, Rebecca? What's your favorite game? Uh, virtual or real physical? Oh, it, you, you pick. If you could play any game you wanted in the uh, evening, what would you play? She's probably too busy. Do you want to probably too busy studying, do you wanna, right? Yeah, you, 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 do you play games? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess um, we got Dad a birthday present called Anki Overdrive. Um, yep. There are these cars that you control with your phone or iPad or something, and um, they go around the track by themselves. All you have to do is, like, you can control their speed, and you have weapons yeah. and attack other cars to so slow them down. Yeah, that's great. What, what about you, Elliot? Um, I actually have two. Let's hear them. Um, Need for Speed Rivals and Minecraft. And Minecraft. Okay. How about you, Annabelle? My favorite game. There are so many. <laughs> <laughs> if you could only play one. If I could only play one game. Well, one game I really like, uh, especially because of the art style, is Kirby's Epic Yarn. Kirby's Epic Yarn. Good. Cool. So we've, we've now gotten a sense for a little bit about where the kids are, and I, I want to tell you guys, one of the reasons we wanted to have you up here is because we adults have no idea what's going on. And we wanted to have you up here to tell us how things are now for you and how you think things are going to be in the future. And during the videos, one of the things that really surprised us was the fact that you had really strong opinions about the future of the world. And Annabelle, you had a really interesting opinion, in particular, about what the biggest challenge facing humanity will be uh, over the next decade. Do you want to share with the audience what, what your thoughts are on that, the biggest challenge facing us as people over the next decade? I think one of the biggest challenges is climate change, because it's not just changing the poles, it's changing everything. It's going to make everything hotter. It's not just going to melt ice. So how does that make you feel? Because you're you know, 10 years old, and you're going to be on this earth for you know, 90, 90 more years, 100 more years. You're going to be here far longer than anybody else in this room, except for the other kids on this panel. So when you think about climate change and how that's going to affect the world in your lifetime, how does that make you feel, and what do you want to do about it? 
I want to stop climate change or reduce it, reduce it as much as possible because I don't want to live on a planet where every day is, oh no, it's hot again. <laughs> well, th it was really interesting when we had folks and when, the, when we had the kids in the office because we asked this question, we had no idea what we would get, and almost universally, everyone said climate change, global, global warming was the big issue facing them. So it was it was interesting to hear that. Um, I want to ask a question about cell phones. Who uses a cell phone? Really? You don't Does use my a cell mom's phone? count? Yeah. Does your mom's any count? cell so, phone. So any cell yeah, phone. and how many of you use your parents' cell you phone, do? and how many of you have your own cell phone? You that have you your get own cell phone. What yes. do you got? Can't wait. Tanner's got something in his new Geekwire bag that he's brought up here. It's a watch that calls my mom or my dad. Really? Wow. You, be that you is better cool. call that right now, Tanner John. So can you call your mom from that watch right there? Well, I think it's dead or something. <laughs> <laughs> the batteries ran out? Yeah, watch. If I press it, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you need to get a new device then, huh? What? Well, the thing is, you can do this, hold it really long, then boof, there it goes. Well, it doesn't sound like a very good technology if it doesn't last that long. Yeah, I guess so. Well, <laughs> I, and what is this thing called? Uh, it, this thing is called a, a watch. I just call it a Spy Kids watch. And um, uh, it is from, I can't remember what kind of place it is. Yeah, okay, well cool. Uh, thanks for bringing that product to show and tell. That was really cool. Uh, so who else has their, does anyone have their own phone? It's, it's yours, it's, it's your yours personal alone. phone, really? Yeah, I have a Droid Mini. Yeah, what do you like to do on your phone? Play video games and watch Minecraft videos. Really, oh. is, that, is that basically all you do? Pretty much. Marcus, when we had you in the office, it's kind of, you seem a little Minecraft obsessed. Oh yeah, I have Minecraft on my phone too. Oh, okay. Is that all you do? Like in your spare time? Yeah. Um, I watch TV. All right, yeah. What do you like better, TV or Minecraft? Um, uh, that's it's hard. Tough. That's a hard it's one. one. Yeah. Does TV include movies? Yes. <laughs> okay, then yeah, TV. All right, all right. So, <laughs> Elliot, what do, you, what do you do on your phone? Um, I don't have one, but if my mom would let me use me, She's, She's right back there. <laughs> Everyone, go make the case. <laughs> to Elliot's mom, he wants he wants his phone. So um, usually, um, if she lets me, then I'll just like go on, do whatever I want, um, watch watch Minecraft videos, play Minecraft, do all this crazy stuff. And usually, she doesn't even monitor me. <laughs> So, uh oh, that's a threat to mom. <laughs> well, I think you're getting a sense of why Microsoft maybe bought yes. uh, uh, Minecraft here. So, future generation. Many of you who follow GeekWire may recognize Rebecca. She and her sister Kimberly were, uh, they, they achieved a certain fame on GeekWire and actually as a result around the world, uh, they sent a balloon, a high altitude balloon, up to the edge of space. And so we actually have a video that gives a sense for what the young sisters did uh, to get that video up, to get that balloon up to space. And so we wanted to show that to you here, just to give a sense for the, the potential of these kids, even at, at this young of an age. So let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and play that video now. <laughs> One of our goals was to try to see the blackness of space, and here was our Loki Lego launcher right on the edge of space. So, Rebecca, that was so much fun. <laughs> t t tell us what you and your sister learned on your first spacecraft in the, the Young Space Program. Well... I guess it's the main lesson that we learned was um, don't speculate, rely on data, because <laughs> because um, <laughs> 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 
because we had a GPS tra tracker on there to make sure that we found it. And we had read that it didn't work above 21,000 feet. It wouldn't send us messages. And because it continued sending us messages up to 68,000 feet, um, we thought it was just hovering on 21,000 feet and it, did, and it was just, it didn't work. So we were really worried. And then when we got it back, we also had a computer on our, um, on our balloon craft and it measured altitude and temperature and pressure and latitude and longitude. And then when we saw how high it actually went, we were really happy. That's great. Yeah. What, what are the other kids that have seen the video of launching something into space? What do you think of, of that project? Um, I have just one question about that. Yep. What's with the cat in R2-D2? <laughs> <laughs> So we call it the Loki Lego launcher because Loki was our cat and uh, Lego because every time we launch another balloon, we're going to put a different Lego minifigure on there. That's great. Yeah. So, so, so uh, Rebecca, do you, do you want to go into space someday? Do you hope to, to make it into space yourself? That would be really fun and awesome, yeah. Yeah, how about the rest of you kids? Yeah. How, who else wants to go to space? Anyone? You do? Or why do you want to go to space? Because I've never been there before, and I wonder what it's like, and um, uh, I want to see the stars up close, and I want to see the sun, what it's like, and the moon. Yeah, and find and, moon rocks. And find some moon rocks. Cool. Do you want to be a geologist? Um, I don't know what a geologist is, but sure. <laughs> That's a guy who studies rocks, yes. And we should say, Tanner, we looked into it, and they do have air conditioning on the International Space Station. I know that was a big concern of yours, and they do. So you're good. Yep. <laughs> yeah, because before, remember, you were a little concerned about going up into space because there wasn't air conditioning. You thought it'd be too hot, right? Yeah, but, but I thought, and I also remember, and I also looked up if there's air in Antarctica and, uh, uh, what's her name again? Uh, <laughs> It'll come to you, buddy. If there was air in Antarctica, what's that have to do with space? Siri uh, told me that there is in, in <laughs> Antarctica. <laughs> wow, do you use Siri a lot? You ask Siri the phone questions? Yeah, she's really helpful. She is, yeah. Are you into artificial intelligence? Uh, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so anybody else yeah, interested what, in going you to space? Talk about space, Annabelle. Marcus is. Or look, go, go ahead, Annabelle. Um, about going to space. Yeah, go, traveling I, to space. Are you interested in that? I would like to go to Mars because recently NASA has found liquid, like salt water, up there. But and you might think, well. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. We should send our rovers over there to, to look at it, but we can't because they were sterilized before they were launched, but they spent so much time in space that maybe uh, they aren't so sterilized anymore. And so we can't have them, we can't have them going anywhere near water and disturbing it. Yeah. Um, and a way they're trying to work around that is to maybe send up rovers that have 3D printers on them to like make a little rover up on Mars that can go and get the water. So, so do you think you'll go to space in your lifetime? I would like to, but okay. it takes a lot of training. Yeah. yeah. How, Mar Marcus, it sounded like you're interested in going to space too? Well, there's some... I mean, you got a Star Wars well, shirt on. Yeah. I mean, so come on. I think it'd be really fun because if I could have a superpower either be telekinesis or flight. And now flight just seems so awesome. Like I could go way up and then drop down and then at the last second catch, my, catch myself. <laughs> but like in space, I hear all those like crashes. Like it just go, like the spacecraft is going up and they're like, it worked, it worked. <laughs> yeah, wow, wow, okay. So um, I was just gonna ask the kids what they think about what will life be like when you have kids? So in 20 or 30 years, what do you think, what do you think is gonna have changed by the time we get to 20 or 30 years from now? Yeah, Elliot, do you wanna jump in on that one? Sure, um, there's only one thing that I can think from that. I hope that if I have kids, if. Um, <laughs> Smart boy. Um, <laughs> 
So I hope that my kids won't annoy me so I can just do my work. I just, I don't know. I don't know anymore. <laughs> cool. At, Tanner, what do you think life is going to be like in 20 or 30 years when you have kids? Um, you better have kids. Uh, I'll think that I hope I have a good family. I hope that we have good food and we pray a lot. Okay, good, good. And, and is there anything that you think will change? It'll be different in 20 or 30 years that's different from now? Yeah, my mom and dad will be gra a grandpa or grandma. Okay, well that would be a big change, wouldn't it? Okay. And anybody else think any big changes? Let's, let's let Rebecca give a shot here. Any big changes in 20 or 30 years? Well, we'll probably have more technology by then, considering how things are growing so quickly now. And that might mean that we'll have to scold our kids a lot more for using electronics at the dinner table. <laughs> uh, Does that happen to you guys a lot? Do you guys get in trouble for using technology too much? Who's ever gotten in trouble for using the go. phone or, or maybe a game? Tanner, you ever gotten in trouble for using a phone or game too much? Uh, Anybody? Yeah, I haven't when I... Uh, I took my mom's phone once, and she didn't even know it. I sometimes do that, and I sneak in, grab it, then play on it or watch a movie on it when she's sleeping or she's downstairs making breakfast. Wow. You're a troublemaker. I knew that when I first laid eyes on you. Uh, who, who, else, who else has gotten in a little trouble? Oh, Elliot. Elliot has gotten in trouble for using technology too yeah, much. Yeah, in fact, it was actually this morning. <laughs> <laughs> So I was watching TV with my sister, you know, we were just watching shows like Spongebob, stuff like that. So then um, <clears throat> my mom says, hey, it's time to go brush teeth. And I'm like, hey, should I get my clothes on too? And she's like, what, you haven't even got your clothes on? Oh, uh, geez. So then I get my clothes on and we're off. I mean, my dad had to go drop off his um, truck and my sister had to go to school. Who was there, Leah? Um, <laughs> and... Well, it sounds yeah, like here. technology is a bit of a time waster yeah. then. So, yeah. so one of the reasons that all of you are up here is you're, you're super smart, I can tell. And so I have a hunch you all have pretty good report cards in school, I, have, I would bet. So if there, is, if there was one thing that you could change about your school to help you learn better, what would it be? Annabelle, do you have, a, do you have any thoughts on that? What would you change about your school to learn better? About my school? Yeah. Um, Every day should be a field trip, and not in the way you, you might think, but I think a lot more people uh, learn better with hands-on stuff. So if you go out in the field and actually do stuff, then you might learn better. And if you can't do that, have somebody who's already done it come in and talk about it. And even if you can't have that, then you can like, talk to them via Skype or something. Yeah, how, how about you, Elliot? Um, one thing that I'd change about my school, a better cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> how, about, mean, how about to learn better? Something to learn better. Uh, okay, oh, we'll take that as a pass. All right. <laughs> how, about, how about you, Rebecca? Because you actually attend a school, and one of the things they focus on is, is inquiry learning, right? Yeah. You ask questions, and you figure out answers. Is there, is there anything you really love about your school that you think other schools should have? Uh, my science teacher. What's that? My science teacher. Your science, what's great about your science teacher? Well, she gives us a lot of hands-on hands -on learning experience, like Annabelle said. Um, we do labs almost every day where we go out and do some kind of experiment. Um, and she lets us use Bunsen burners and light matches and stuff by ourselves and carry Have you ever caught anything objects. on fire? No. She lit, some hair, she lit some of her hair on fire. Um, so, so we could see what burning hair smelled like, so we would know never to do it. How's it smell? Wow. Burnt. Oh, that's a teacher. Burnt. Really burnt. It, it, it smells burnt. It smells burnt, sorry. Yeah, it smells really bad. All right. So, well, cool. Anything else any of the kids have to yeah. say about technology? Marcus. I actually think at my school, in about a few, like, t like 20 years, I hope eventually Alki Elementary has little signs that say, you are here. You, are you know, here. like have maps and then have a little dot on the map that says you are here. So then you can 
know where you're going because I get lost there. In you my get school lost, yeah, yeah. Anything else about technology that you guys particularly like? Um, or want to say. For yeah. one, last, one last moment here. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing a lot of you know Google Maps. I'm familiar with the product. <laughs> they really need to update it. Oh, okay. Well, we've had some folks from Google on here. I mean, Maybe you can make your case why. I mean, seriously. Um, so there's this new house. I mean, like, we're still looking for houses. Um, and it's on this piece of land, and it's all been... Menu, it's all been um, just worked out. It's not all trees on nature and stuff. It's actually pretty clear, but now it just looks like um, it's a forest, basically. Yeah. I mean, like so, there's this building that was built in like 2005. So Google they Maps, said, they're not updated. They haven't updated that. No, huh? they really need to do that. They really need to get on that. Really, Anything else really. in technology that people love? Annabelle. Yeah, last comments there. Yeah. I like the way that by using technology and the internet, you can like connect with anybody anywhere on the world in like an instant. Yeah. You can have real time conversations. Yeah. Tanner, you raise your hand. What what's your favorite thing about technology? My favorite thing about technology is that uh, you can uh, you can you can uh, get on your phone or computer or whatever you are on and it has technology on it, and you, you can do it every one. That's the only thing about my technology. Yeah. Well, good. Oh, Marcus, last word. I yeah. think what, some, what something needs is like update, like really badly, Xfinity. Xfinity. Xfinity, Xfinity. okay. All right. Okay, all right. Finally. It's, this is a lot of common ground between yes, you and every single adult in the audience. We've, we've, yes, yes. we've really made it there. Well, thank you to all of our great kids tech panels. Let's hear it for them. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So as they walk off, as they walk off, we've got one more video to show you. This is a bit of a repeat, but some of these kids haven't seen the first video that we showed, so we want to rerun yeah, that for you the as, kid, you guys as can they watch walk the final off. Video, so you let's guys, go ahead and play that. They haven't seen a lot of these yet. Yeah, so. yeah. Movie time. So. And what so. is your favorite technology? Oh, yeah. Electricity. Electricity. Uh, cause most of, the, most of the things from modern times are powered by electricity. Would you rather be a scientist, an entrepreneur, um, an astronaut, or a firefighter? What's an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur? Oh, it's somebody who builds new things. Then, uh, the person who builds new things. What's an entrepreneur? It's a person who builds and creates new mention, things. Bing, 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 bing. You can just call me Tanner John. Sometimes when I watch Netflix and I look at the sun, it kind of zaps my eyes, kind of. Wow. Between the two, because they don't mix together. Well, I wanted to show you this device. Do you know what this thing is? You can pick <laughs> it up and do you know what it's called? Walkman. Yeah. How'd you know that? Oh, you There's can words. read. <laughs> Um, this takes, um, what it was, um, this takes one of the, um, it wasn't a CD. No CD. It was no. a track. Uh, not any track, cassette tape. And guess what? It was not connected to the internet. Isn't that cool? Well, with this, you could just hear one music and that's it. Only about eight songs. That's it. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, but then I, I'm going back to the um, um, I'm going back to the iPad and iPhone. There's this app called iTube, and basically it's YouTube, but it's for iPhone. So anything that you find on iTube, you literally can download onto your iTunes and onto your phone. Have you upgraded to Windows 10 yet? Uh, what's a Windows 10? Windows 10 from Microsoft. Have you upgraded? Oh, um, no, I never worked for Microsoft yet. I'm I'm just um. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> nice job. Nice job, kids. Let's hear it for them. Let's hear it for them. Yes. Come on, kids. We're going to walk off the stage yeah. now. Well, look, before you go, before you go, uh, kids, many of you know that Phil Spencer, the head of Xbox, was here yesterday, and he left yeah, behind yeah. a very special Minecraft-themed gift bag for each of the kids. So here we go. There you are. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. And Tanner's got a special one. All yep. right.
Thank you so Thanks, much, you guys. guys. Big Come round of applause kids. for our kids. Let's go. Let's Woo. round them up. Good job. Good job. <laughs>